it's that time of year again where I answer the burning question, are holiday ops boxes still worth it? But uh, before we get to that, I feel like the garage needs a little decorating. So uh, one sec. <laughs> All right, this is way better, right? Okay, so let's start off by answering the question that we just asked. And the answer is, yeah, the holiday ops boxes are still worth buying. It's still better than buying the war chest. So there you have it. Video's done. Uh, if you don't want any more detail than that, I'll see you in the next video. For those of you that would still like to know why they're a good value, stick around. Okay, first, let's talk about how we get the value of a box, because if you don't understand how we get the value, then it's difficult to understand why they're valuable. So first up, I'm going to show you this graphic. It is a gold conversion graphic. So basically, in order to value a box, I have to turn everything into a single currency. And technically speaking, every item in a box has a gold value. So you can use this graphic. Uh, you can pause the video. I'm not going to go through each value. But basically, this is how I value each item in a box. So let's get to the overall value of the boxes themselves. So the next graphic we have here, Holiday Ops 2021-22 gold per box value. So we actually had a much higher data range than we had last year. 5,347 boxes were uh, data mined for this. The approximate gold per box, when you count gold drops, when you count credit drops, when you count premium time, premium tanks, and garage slots, total gold per box value is about 960, which is outstanding. However, if you're like me, I have 1,301 days of premium time. I don't need premium time. I have more garage slots than there are tanks in the game, so that's pointless for me as well. The only thing that's really useful to me is gold and gold. So let's say we just ignore everything else. That's the second half of this graphic here. So if we only count the raw gold output of the boxes and the tank value or the gold value of every tank that you get and only count those, then the boxes are worth about 750 gold, 751 if you round up, about 750 gold per box in this year's boxes. If we take that second number of only gold and tank compensation, and then we multiply that by the number of boxes and then divide by how much the boxes are, you get this graph here, which basically tells us what we already know, which is the more expensive bundles means you pay less per box, which means they're more valuable gold per dollar. Keep in mind that uh, we're gonna talk a little more in depth about this later on, but if you have 50 boxes to open, your value per box will go up substantially. So real quick, we're going to go through the statistics of each box. So with this little graph here, you can pause it to read more detail. But basically, we've got an average value of 960 gold per box. And if you're wondering, well, how does that help me? That means that your value is going to be very, very close to that with a large enough uh, number of boxes in your account. More on that later. We're going to get to that at some point. I promise. So basically what this says is that your average will probably be about 960 and 95% of people are either going to be about 45 gold up or below that. So most people are going to have a per box average between 914 and 1,005 gold per box. So next we're going to do a little preview, uh, but here's the average contents of a box. Uh, the average box has 332 gold, 56,000 credits. 0.72 days of premium time and uh, the low tier drop chance or the low tier percent chance is 11.22% with a percent chance for a tier 8 at 3.24%. We're going to explain those numbers uh, in just a second. Before we get to that, I want to talk about the history of the Holiday Ops gold per dollar value. So with this graph here, we are basically looking at the 21 to 22 year of Holiday Ops and we notice that it sits above last year and below the year before that. Please, please, please note, this is why I have the sample size listed here. The 17, 18 year literally was the was 225 boxes and those were all my boxes. And so that's why that value is so high. My guess is that the drop rates have been pretty similar year to year. So up on the screen right now is a little graphic from last year. So the APAC region actually published their drop chance and we can see high value items, which are low tier tanks, have a drop chance of 11.66%, which is identical to this year's. 
And we can also see that standard items have an 85.94% chance of dropping, which is also identical to this here. And if we look at the epic items, this is where things get muddy because they combine tier 8 tanks and 3D styles. And we know that those can both drop at the same time. Uh, but this year, uh, we did publish those numbers. And we can see that this year, the published stat is that a 3D style is a 5% chance overall, of course, until you've opened all of them, and that the drop chance of tier 8s is 2.4%. 13. Why are the drop rates for tier 8 higher in the data than in the article? And it may not seem intuitive, but statistically, it should actually be higher than 2.4%. And this is because of the new bad luck mechanic. So that basically says for every 49 boxes that you were unlucky and didn't get a tier 8 draw, you're guaranteed to get one on the 50th box. So this essentially sets a floor for the drop rate, uh, and it's impossible to go below 2% as long as your data set has, you know, 50 box or multiples of 50 boxes, right? So normally what you have, and we'll throw a graphic on the screen here, is uh, you get a distribution around 2.4% that evenly spreads between 0% and 4.8%. However, with this mechanic, you essentially get a floor at 2%, and all the probabilities between 0 and 2% are summed up, so you get this spike at 2%, and then you go into a regular bell curve over the 2.4% drop rate. So essentially, because this floor happens, it means the average in the data is displaced to be higher than 2.4%. And when your drop rate for one of the larger items is increased, that means technically the drop rates for the other items go down. So pretty much this higher drop chance for the tier 8s accounts for the lower percentage chance observed in the data for low tier tanks and average drops. So let's look at the average drops right now. So for my data, what I saw was an 85.7% chance to draw one of the regular items, which is premium time, gold, and credits. And I did also break down the percent chance of each individual item. So you can see the odds of getting 1,000 gold, the odds of giving 500,000 credits, and the odds of seven days premium time, which is not published in their article. So, you know, do with that what you will. Moving on, we do see that the drop rates for low tier vehicles is uh, roughly 11.2%, so pretty close to the published article. What's interesting here is that since nobody owned any of these low tier vehicles, the drop rates are pretty accurate. Keep in mind that Wargaming did confirm they do have the mechanic in place where every time you get a vehicle pulled, it will draw from a set of the vehicles you do not yet own. So that means that once you've owned all the vehicles, then it will draw from their percent drop, whatever the pool is. So when we look at the tier eight drops, we do obviously see it's a higher percent chance because of the floor we explained earlier, but also know that the Bofors Tornwagen, the Caliban, and the M4Y all have roughly higher drop chances than the other two vehicles because people have had an opportunity to actually purchase the other two vehicles, meaning they get skipped for the first three draws of tier eights. So moving on, there is one last thing I wanna to touch on and that would be the 3D skins for the tier 10 tanks. You're probably wondering, 13, how many boxes do I got to get before I get all six skins? And I've got a little bit of an average here for you, but when I looked at the data, some people got really lucky and they pulled all six skins in their first 75 boxes. Some people pulled 150 boxes and never even got all six skins. But you're going to get on average about four skins for the $100 box value, which is 75 boxes. Um, but yeah, there's the graphic there, you know, Hopefully you get better drops than the average. And just for a little fun, I put in the, uh, the luckiest box graph again. 13, why are magic boxes so low? And the answer is there weren't that many. People don't buy the magic boxes for some reason. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I just don't have enough data. So, you know, guys, next year, maybe buy some more magic boxes. Feel the magic. I don't know. CC's, uh, I also did CC separately in case people are thinking, hmm, I bet Wargaming gives the CC's better odds in their boxes. And the answer is no, it's pretty on par with everybody else. So let's talk about uh, some of the criticism for this year's holiday ops. Um, the big thing this year is really with the ornaments and the decorations. There was the whole snafu of the uh, article showing a non duplicate decoration advertised for the large boxes, which later they amended the article and said, actually, no, you're going to get duplicates in large boxes. And 
Understandably, the community was unhappy, but the reason why the community was so unhappy is because it is so difficult to actually finish the collections this year. Even though they got rid of the one through five tiers of ornaments, which makes sense. I mean, why are we making all these assets? Why not make fewer assets? I get it. It's cheaper that way. But the problem is, is that it's really hard to fill out all these uh, pages. Normally for me, I get 200 boxes from Wargaming and generally after I open them all, I am nearly at the 50% credit bonus for the rest of the season. However, this year I wasn't even close. I was at like 30%. Even now, after I've ground out a few games, I've got a ton of boxes from people viewing the channel. Thank you. I appreciate those little parcels. Parcels have replaced the uh, those generous uh, snow maidens. But in any case, this year I'm sitting at 41%. I probably put at least 20 hours in the game and I'm not even close to the 50%. And I'm probably only going to get one of the 2D styles from those uh, collections anyway. So hopefully Wargaming takes that into account next year. It shouldn't be this hard for someone who spent over $200 on the game to complete their Holiday Ops collection. So that's all I've got for you guys this video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And hopefully you found this at least interesting or valuable. Um, I'm out of here, guys.